So about six months ago, uh, this would have been about April this year, roughly, six or seven months, uh, a friend of mine and I were talking about Dungeons and & Dragons, and he runs a small Dungeons & Dragons session that he dungeon masters, and he wanted to throw his players a logic problem of some kind. This was uh, originally going to be a pen and paper problem. We, we didn't really know exactly what would fit in with the motif or the, the, the genre, but uh, I threw up the idea of maybe making a physical logic problem or some sort of puzzle that they would have to solve, like a sliding block puzzle. That was one of our ideas. And then um, I offered my services to him for the Shapoko, which I own uh, right behind me. This is a Shapoko 2 CNC machine. I have a DeWalt 611 router connected to it. Um, it doesn't have a huge build area, but it's more than large enough to build these small puzzles. And uh, we came up with the idea of making a puzzle box instead of an actual like problem that they would have to solve. The puzzle box is a container that just has an unusual lock. You know, it has an un an inobvious uh, way of opening. So the players have to figure out what the solution is, open the box, and they get the prize, whatever it is. So I came up with several designs, and I kind of whittled them down in terms of difficulty and uh, you know what I thought I could do. I've never done anything like this before, even remotely close, in terms of complexity. And uh, eventually I decided to go with a puzzle box that had a built-in lock mechanism, something that I wouldn't have to build myself, I just buy it off the shelf, uh, like a padlock. And that's actually what I ended up with, was just a rotary dial padlock. And I built the puzzle box around it. So basically what we ended up with is a rotary padlock puzzle box. And this is it. Pretty cool, huh? So let me show you how this works. No cat. Nope. Nope. Down. Okay. <laughs> Damn cats. Okay. So... Here's the layout of the box. Um, this handle up here, I originally thought that would actually be tied to some sort of mechanism, a release mechanism underneath. Um, unfortunately, the box, you know, the construction of it was a little too complex, and I couldn't build a, me a mechanism to actually make this unlock, so it's actually just free sitting in there right now. Uh, just a couple of pegs, keep it in place, and um, it's really just for aesthetics. I mean, it's just for looks at this point. So, like I said, the box itself is actually a combination lock, and the players are presented with some sort of story which contains the clues to unlock the box. And the clues pertain to not only these symbols, but also the orientation of this disc, which they have to figure out. So there are four orientations, and they have to figure out what the right one is. Once they figure that out and they figured out what the combination of the symbols are, they can go ahead and try to unlock the box. There is, one, however, one other trick to unlocking the box, and that is that this panel in the back, with the eyes of the snake, slides down. So they have to press that down in order for this piece to slide forward, which is the handle. Hopefully that's kind of obvious. Of course, there's a, there's a master lock padlock in here, so if you understand how that works, then you know how this works. Once you figured out what the combination is, you would first rotate the box, or you rotate the dial clockwise a few times to reset the lock, and then you'd move it to the very first um, number, or in this case, symbol of the combination. Let's uh, pretend that that is the first symbol in the combination. So you turn it there, and then you got to go clockwise to the second symbol. But you have to go twice around. So if this leaf down here, and I think you can see that. I don't know if you can see that's a leaf or not is the second symbol. You gotta go around and around again. And then you go just clockwise to the third symbol, whichever it is, let's say it's this thing. So then the block would be ready to unlock. Unfortunately, I can't show you what the combination is because we want the players, some of the players may actually watch this video and, and we don't want them to know what the combination is before they get a chance to run through the Dungeons and Dragons thing and, and, uh, and you know, play it naturally. 
So I'm going to unlock the box for you really quick. Um, actually, what I'll do is I'll enter the combination, and then I'll show you unlocking the box. And uh, you'll see the inside. Knock it off. Okay, so I've entered the combination, and the box should unlock now if I slide this forward. Pop. The boxes are, there's actually two of them. Two boxes. Um, like I said, I think these are made for maple. And there's a little spring that uh, allows the box to pop up when you unlock the box. Gives it a nice uh, solid feel. These boxes aren't that big, but they're large enough to hold, say, you know, a message for another puzzle or a couple of D&D uh, &D dice, um, something for the players. Let me show you exactly what's on the inside and show you how it works. So, as you saw before, this ring just pops off. Now, this dial is actually just press fit onto the lock itself. So you can just pop that right off, and there's the master lock. It's just your regular high school style padlock. Just need to pop this up and flip it over. There's these two plugs on the back, which actually hide some screws, which are connected to the uh, locking mechanism itself. So I'm just going to unscrew these real quick. And with those undone, the sliding mechanism will pop off. And with that out of the way, I can actually remove this middle plate, which isn't actually bolted down to anything. And that reveals these three screws, which will release the bottom plate. There we go. So you can see how this works. Uh, it's pretty basic. There's not much to it. Okay, so I've reassembled the box, and I just want to show you some of the art that I did for this project. So, as you might have noticed, a lot of this is Aztec in nature, uh, sort of Aztec in culture, I suppose. Uh, the snake god itself, obviously Aztec. The, um, this is made out of red oak. In fact, most of the box is made out of red oak. And the teeth of the snake are actually uh, a product called epoxy. It's not epoxy, but it's apoxy. It's actually a putty epoxy product. And uh, so I mixed up some of that, I stuffed that pot, that putty in there, and I uh, waited for it to set up, and then carved it out just like clay, and it worked out pretty well. Nice thing about epoxy, or any kind of putty epoxy, is that uh, it sets up just like rock afterwards. The, uh, the symbols are all, of course, taken from Dungeons & Dragons lore. Um, a lot of these are, I believe, gods, basically symbols for gods, or demigods, or deities in Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, this star, I think, is Corallon. This anvil is the Dorban Guild of Moradin, and I'm not sure exactly what the other ones are. So if you know Dungeons & Dragons, you might uh, actually recognize some of these. The rest of it is, is pretty much just a mishmash of, you know, styles of Aztec and, you know, things that I thought would look good, like the, the snake looking at you in the back. I thought it was pretty cool. Actually, in fact, these two eyes were, eventually, were, were originally going to be locking mechanisms. They were actually going to be buttons that you had to press in in order to release that handle on the top or to slide this panel down. I wasn't entirely sure what I was going to do with that, but that was the mechanism that just did, did, didn't, didn't work out the way that I wanted it to. So kind of had to ditch that idea. Um, on the back, I have some labels that you might have noticed. These are actually not part of the puzzle. They're, they're just flourishes that I added for flavor. Um, the, the font that these labels are made from is a Dorvan font uh, from Dungeons & Dragons itself. It's actually the Moradin font. And it's all written in English, so this is basically a cryptogram. And you can actually solve it. It's a puzzle in and of itself. If you wanted to figure out exactly which each symbol uh, represents a letter in the English alphabet, uh, you could work out exactly what this says. And hopefully the players don't watch this video and figure that one out. I finished it with some mahogany stain, just kind of washed it all over. 
the uh, obviously these these gold pieces are made with a with a gold paint. The the snake dial in the middle is a uh, actually a crackled uh, copper paint. I don't know if you can really see that very well in the in the video, but uh, it's got kind of a texture to it, which I thought was kind of nice. And um, then I I darkened up some of the deep spots with black acrylic just to make it pop. You can see, I think you can see that most in the snake. All right, so that's my presentation. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit subscribe down below. I will be making more puzzle boxes in the future. It's something I actually really enjoyed doing and uh, I'd like to do more of them. I have some great ideas for some more complex puzzle boxes. They're gonna get bigger, they're gonna get uh, harder to solve and uh, I'm actually gonna throw, I'm gonna start throwing in some electronics so you're going to start seeing some Arduino projects built into a puzzle box. And uh, hopefully we can make some really, really cool stuff. Um, I'm also going to be doing a series of videos called a CNC thing a week or so. It's not going to be quite weekly. It's just going to be mostly weekly. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, these are going to be projects that are very simple. They can be designed in a matter of hours and then built over the span of a couple of days on a weekend. Um, so I've got a cell phone holder that is going to be up uh, first and then I have a Batman poster frame for a uh, little Batman promotional poster that I've had hanging around the office forever so I need to do something with it. Uh, mostly those projects are going to revolve around things that I just have lying around and they just need something done with them. So I'm going to leave you with a relatively short montage of a lot of the parts of the puzzle box being made on that machine behind me. And um, I'll see you next time. Bye.